so we got the lineup. What bike is right for you in 2024? Let's get into it. All right, so we have the Telaria Sting, we have the E-Ride Pro, and we have the one who brought it all to us, the Ceron Light B, the LBX. So, starting off with the Telaria, we have a 60 volt, 45 amp hour battery, and uh, 19 inch rims and tires come stock on this bike. Uh, max top speed is 48 miles an hour. It has a gearbox instead of a belt drive and uh, comes with a 420 chain with a 44 tooth sprocket stock. This bike also comes with the factory forks which are Fast Ace factory forks. Um, some of the new bikes may be coming actually with the Fast Ace, it's Fast Ace on them. They may not have the red and uh, blue up here, maybe like a pewter and a silver. Um, but the Fast Ace forks are fantastic. Now on the Telaria, you're able to go into the display and you're able to change, if you change your sprocket size to keep your speedometer accurate, you're able to change your gear ratio on the display. Um, you're also able to adjust your uh, regen or your engine braking. These bars are high-rise bars. Um, they are the highest high-rise bars that you could, or that I have found, that are the same size as the stock bars, which are the 31 millimeter uh, mount size. I absolutely love these bars. I think they're fantastic. They work really good on this bike. Uh, a couple of important mods that you need to do on this bike when you originally get it. Um, one, I believe, is the handlebars. you got to raise the bars. The seat leveling kit. Um, it sits you a little forward on the bike when you get it out of the box. So if you take the seat off, what you could do is you put a couple of nuts underneath the seat. You could use washers as well to space it, but what you want to do is just space the seat off of the subframe a little bit, and then you can mount it back up. Um, they also sell a kit that you can get, um, but you can do it the cheap man's way and just use a, a couple of nuts. Also, a really important mod is the gearbox mod. If you could see here, I have a circlip holding on my sprocket, but behind that circlip I have a spacer, a rubber washer, and what that does is it shims out your sprocket so you have no sprocket noise, because this bike is notorious for giving you some noise as you're off the throttle and uh, coming into a turn or on braking bumps or something like that, and you'll have a lot of chain chatter. So once you shim this sprocket um, you do not have that noise anymore now some of the new bikes are already coming with the shim sprocket but if you have an older one um, yeah that's something that you want to really immediately do another mod is since you have a gearbox here what I did was you can see right there it's a fuel breather vent cap okay so I put that on my gearbox vent hose and if you're gonna use that what that does is it stops water when you're washing the bike stops water from getting in the bike in the gearbox so if you're gonna use one of those what I recommend you do is there's a ball bearing in the inside of that so you need to remove that ball bearing because it's a one-way check valve so it only lets air in and not air out so you will overpressurize your gearbox if you do not remove that ball bearing. I also had changed the rear shock, the fast day shock. Um, this is a MX3 rear shock. I did not like the shock that came on the MX4 originally. So uh, it had nitrogen in it. You could fill it. This one is a sealed unit. You can't fill it. 
but I like the MX-3 rear shock so much better. I think it's more plush than the MX-4s, and it, and it doesn't make any noise, unlike the MX-4s, which made like a weird noise um, every time it would compress and then rebound. Uh, this bike is a fantastic bike. This bike with the gearbox, it's amazing. Um, it is my Cadillac. I absolutely love this bike. Um, it's not the fastest out of the three. It's the second fastest because the E-Ride Pro would be the fastest. But it is by far the smoothest E-Moto out. The gearbox, the way it is, it's, it's just fantastic. So if you're a bigger rider, the measurement between the foot pegs here and the seat is an inch taller you have an inch more room than you do on the E-Ride Pro or then on the Suron, okay? The Suron and the E-Ride Pro are the same. They're the same size from the foot peg to the top of the seat. So if you're anywhere over 5'8", five, 5'9", five, you do not have to add peg drops to this. Now if you're taller than that, you might want to add some peg lower and some peg drops peg lowering kit but if you look the pegs are just about even with the bottom of the bike so if you look at this they're not and same with the Suron they're not even close to being equal with the bottom of the bike so if you buy the peg lower the peg drop kit you will be able to have a much more comfortable cockpit position than you would in the stock form. Okay, what's notorious on the Telaria is you have a little battery motion movement. Um, the battery seems to move a little bit on the stock units and it's really easy to fix. It comes with these battery wedges here and then here that need to be put in the right spot that hold the, the battery down when the lid is shut. Um, it still moves around even if you have those in the right spot. So what I recommend is there's bumpers right here on the side of the bike. So what you do is you take those bumpers off. There's three screws or two screws holding those bumpers in, those rubber bumpers, and you're going to remove them, shim them out with a two washers or a washer and then put them back on so you put a washer behind the bumper and then you put the bumper back on what that's going to do is it's going to stop your sideways motion like my battery doesn't move it this bike is so solid and quiet right now so there's a couple of things that you got to do to this bike when you get it right out of the box but once you do those things this bike it really is an amazing bike it, it it is by far by far the best bike i think for trail riding even though it's not as fast as the e-ride i still think this bike is better for overall trail riding it's smoother it's quieter it's a little heavier it's about 10 pounds heavier but uh, i think the added weight is okay because it helps in the turns uh, the bike feels more planted, um, it's more stable, um, personal opinion. So um, if you're a bigger guy and not looking to hit a lot of like MX tracks or you've just been doing a lot of trail riding or, um, you know, single track and this bike is fantastic. The Telaria also has the most cockpit room. You have the most room in the cockpit. So when you're sitting on the bike, you have the most adjustability moving forward and backwards on the bike. The seat is long, and like I said, once you do your seat leveling kit, um, it makes the ride just so much better and, and the feel of the bike. So some handlebar risers, the seat leveling kit, and uh, this bike is, is set. You're done. All right, so we have the, um, the one that started it all, the Suron LBX. This bike is fantastic. Um, it really is a great bike for what it is. 
you know Sauron had the market cornered for so long and then they kind of just went to sleep and uh, they didn't do anything uh, they haven't made much many changes since the first release of the LBX and uh, it's it's pretty much the same bike battery has changed battery has gotten bigger um, you went from a cable throttle to an electronic throttle but other than that it's pretty much the same bike and it hasn't really changed uh, the voltage on the battery has stayed the same it's still 60 volts um, 90 amps on the controller uh, where the Telaria is 120 so the Telaria by far is more powerful than the Suron the MX-4 I should say is more powerful than the uh, Suron might be and uh, this bike is great for let's say um, a girlfriend or um, a wife um, a young younger person uh, just getting into riding because this has the most aftermarket support which means that you're able to um, dial in the bike any way you want you can buy pretty much any single part on this bike aftermarket that you want they have it where the Talara is a little little farther behind the E-Ride Pro has just started some of the parts will marry between the bikes on the E-Ride Pro but for the m majority of them uh, the parts are going to work um, on the Suron and the E-Ride Pro. The Suron is the lightest of the three. It's weighing in at somewhere around 125 pounds where the E-Ride Pro is coming in around 137 to 139 where the Talara is coming in at uh, MX-4 is coming in at uh, 153 so there is a big weight difference there um, that you kind of feel only when you're lifting the bike up or jumping now the Suron has a belt drive unlike the Telaria which has a gearbox so there's a belt on this side and then there's a jack shaft that goes across to a chain same here here's the belt jack shaft to the chain on the E-Ride Pro and then on the Telaria you have the gearbox that goes to the to the chain so it's they all have two stage transmissions um, they're just set up a little bit different these two are the same as far as the suspension linkage goes the Suron has an uh, above linkage so you can see here you got your triangle shock mount you can get this in uh, a higher size or a lower size to raise or lower the bike um, if you wanted they also have seat riser um, frame rising kits so you can make the frame bigger um, they have everything for this bike absolutely everything there's the most aftermarket support possible so on the Suron under the hood here we have um, the 60 volt battery this is a 38 amp hour um, you tell your battery level by pushing this button when the bike is on you also are able to see it through this window um, the connections for the battery pretty simple you have your data lines here and then you have your battery connections um, and then you have your air switch they all have an air switch so uh, yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much it under the hood the battery doesn't move on the Surons it's always been nice and tight Suron comes with a USB charging port which is awesome that the Telaria does not come with you can add it on but it doesn't come with one um, also the gear ratio cannot be changed on the LBX so if you change your sprocket like I have you are unable to get your display to read correctly um, there's really no fix for that besides changing your controller this bike is the smallest the lightest it's got the smallest frame um, compared to like the e-ride which has a bigger frame if you look there at the Suron's frame and then you look at the e-ride's frame you can see the e-ride's got a 
really beefy section right here where the Suron's smaller. Also, the seat V here is a lot wider. It's more spread apart, so this, this subframe will not work from the E-Ride to the Suron. And there, there are different spacing here. So it's not it's it's similar, but it's different. Suron comes with KKE forks and rear suspension, and they're fantastic for the stock bike. If you're gonna upgrade the bike um, and be doing a lot more jumping, then you're gonna have to uh, spend the money and upgrade your forks and your your rear shock. But for what this bike is out of the box, it's fine. Um, also, the handlebars are low. So you're going to probably want to raise them up. Now, if you look at the swing arms, even though these two bikes look very similar, they're different. They're very different. The rear swing arm and then the rear swing arm on the E-Ride. Let me get the better, better angles so you can see it in the light. So if we look here, you can see it has a center brace and the Suron does not have that center brace where E-Ride does. So it's also got a bigger gap in here than the Suron does. But overall it's very similar in comparison. The bike's very similar. Now, one of the major differences between the bikes is of course the E-Ride is 72 volt. The Suron is a 60 volt. It's a 40 amp hour battery, but the major difference with the E-Ride, I don't know if you guys can see it, but the forks, the forks are an inch taller on the E-Ride than they are on the Telaria or the Suron. They're an inch taller, which raises the whole bike up an inch taller in the front. Makes a massive difference. Um, first time I sat on the bike, I'm like, why does the bike feel so much bigger? I mean, it does because the front end is lifted up that much higher. That's the difference. So, I think it's a great change. I think the Telaria should have had the taller forks because it kind of does have that forward sitting feel as well as the Suron did. Um, but the E-Ride has addressed that problem and added larger forks. So the forks aren't only just longer, they're also wider. They have a wider diameter than the Surons do. Now they're the same width as the Telarias, the same size stanchions, so they're just longer. Um, this bike, the E-Ride, also has an upside down linkage, so their linkage sits underneath the bike where the Telarius sits, I mean the Suron sits on top. So you could totally see the linkage there. The linkage here you really cannot see it too well. You can see here's the linkage. So it does have a linkage. Um, this is the 2.0 version, not the 1.0. So the 2.0, the 1.0 had some issues, um, had a really bad um, laggy throttle that they fixed and then the turbo button now is it still works it's just uh, you got 12 kilowatts without having to use the turbo button which is just great this bike is, is super fast super torquey I wish it had honestly 16 um, I think this bike needs 16 kilowatts I think I think that's what this bike could push comfortably and uh, I think it just needs it. I think it needs the 16 kilowatts and then this bike is just number one. As well as the Telaria. I think they need to stop being 8 and they need to go up to 12. Minimum 12 because their bike is heavier. You put 12 on that Telaria and forget about it. So as far as the brakes go on the Suron and on the Telaria um, and the E-Ride, they're pretty much all the same. Besides the piston covers on the actual caliper, they're pretty much all the same. 
Um, the Suron's rotor is smaller. It's a 200, 210. This is a 220, and that's a 220 um, size rotor. The great thing about the Telaria is if you look on the bottom, it gives you a rotor guard, stock rotor guard. So it protects your rotor from rocks and whatever if you come across a log or something major in the trail and you don't want to damage your your rotor it comes stock with one the Suron does not nor the e-ride now under the hood on the e-ride we have the air switch back there you have your battery meter here you push your button you can see how much battery you have um, you do not have a window like you do here because you have a huge display and that display is going to show you your battery percentage but you do have two connections unlike the Telaria which has one you have a data line and then your battery connection same as on the Suron here 72 volt 40 amp hour battery now the Suron's battery nice and tight E-Ride battery on the other hand I mean this battery was moving around like crazy on me with the lid open, of course. With the lid closed, it stopped it a lot. So I just took, like, um, a piece of plastic and uh, some foam. Made a little wedge. I shove it in there. And then the battery doesn't move now. So it's nice and tight. So that's really helped with the noise. Because this bike is super tight and doesn't make any noise when you're riding over braking bumps or anything like that. It's very, very tight. Also, it has a USB port here, just like the Suron does, except this one has a USB-C port too. Actually, has two USB-C ports. It has one there, and it has one right here on the display. There's another USB-C port, so you can charge your GoPro as you're riding if you don't care about wires. Um, yeah, so. Uh, having these extra things that that doesn't have it's it's a nice benefit they all come with the same mounts handlebars mounts um, they're connected to the uh, forks instead of being a direct stem mount they're connected to the center tube on the forks which are good and bad if you hit the ground uh, bike falls your bars are going to turn which you can then reset them um, where a direct stem, if you hit the ground really hard, you're going to just bend your bars. Um, yeah, if, you're, if, you, if your bike hits the ground really hard and your handlebars are crooked, well, you just bent your bars. So, uh, where this one, you're able to just loosen this up and, and, and move them back. Um, drawbacks to both, I think the direct stem mount looks better. I think it's more secure, uh, but you can get away with it. You don't have to do that upgrade. This also came with um, the same size bars as the Telaria did. Suron came with the lowest handlebars. This one came with a little bit higher than the Suron stock bars, but I, I wanted to go up a little bit more. Even though you have an extra inch here um, with, the, with the forks, I, I still wanted to go up a little bit more on the bars, so I just put a little, um, little riser bar on there and it makes a world of a difference. Next is going to be the tires. I'm going to change the tires out um, and we're going to see where that leads. So as far as all three bikes, what bike is right for you? Well, we'll start with the Suron. The Suron's $4,600. Um, like I said, they haven't really changed. They're $4,600, but they have the most aftermarket support. Um, so if you're looking to build a bike and make a bike exactly what you want, well, you're probably going to want to go with the Suron because the Suron is still king for upgrades. The E-Ride Pro, I think, is more designed for people who don't want to power mod their bike right out of the box. It's already set. You're already pretty much 12 kilowatts, and uh, for most people, that's going to be plenty. 
I, I don't think you're going to need anything more than that until, of course, you get more comfortable on the bike. And then when you want more, you can also change your controller, uh, change your battery, change your motor. Same thing that you're going to be able to do on the Suron and the Telaria. Um, and all these parts are currently in the works for the E-Ride. They should be out very soon. Beginning of summer, they should be here as far as the aftermarket controller support. So we'll see how that goes. Um, as of right now, like I said, the Suron is number one for aftermarket support. Then it would be the Telaria and then the E-Ride. So the E-Ride Pro you're looking at, $48.99, where you're looking at $46 with the Suron. So $48.99, $46, I mean, you're getting a lot more with the E-Ride Pro. So if you're not looking to upgrade anything, and uh, you're pretty much going to stay out of the box stock, besides some, you know, aftermarket parts like handlebars and bar mounts and pegs and stuff like that. They have all that, and that all works, but I'm talking power upgrades. So if you're not looking to do any power upgrades, E-Ride Pro is definitely the way to go. Now, you throw the Telaria into the mix. The Telaria is a totally different bike than these two. These two are very similar, especially if that one was a 72 volt, they would be very similar. But this bike is a little bit different. It rides different, it sounds different. It's a different bike. It really, it's hard to compare it to these two because of the gearbox. The gearbox makes it a totally different bike. Um, yes, there's an oil change that needs to be done. The first oil change should be done pretty much before you ride the bike. You gotta get that factory stock oil out that they put in there. And then you're good for like uh, 500 miles, first oil change. And then, uh, then you don't have to change it again for like uh, 3,000 miles, 2,000 miles, you know, so it's not a major problem. There's very little maintenance on these bikes. Where these two, if you break a belt, you're you're definitely stranded. Bike. Okay, so let's get back to it. So so the Telaria is 4,500. So it's a hundred dollars cheaper than the Suron, and it's four hundred dollars cheaper than the E-Ride Pro. It's the same power, 60 volt, as the Suron, but yet the amperage on this thing is 120, where that's 80. So you're getting more power out of the Telaria than you are the Suron, even though it's a heavier bike. What bike is right for you? Well, it all depends on type of riding. Now, there's a rider out there called Talon Pemberton. This kid sends some stupid jumps with his Telaria. Stupid. I'm talking things that you wouldn't even think could be done on these bikes he's doing. So um, it could be jumped, it could be motocrossed. I just think the Suron is better at it. But trail riding, there's no better than the Telaria. That's my personal opinion. I think if you're trail riding, you're an older guy, maybe in your 50s or above, and you're, you're not looking to be going crazy all the time, well, I think the Telaria is a better bike. Um, I think it rides better, I think it's smoother, um, and as far as range, you're pretty much the same on all three of them, uh, with range, depending on how much you're twisting the throttle and, and um, how much you weigh. So it's not really not a major factor, but what is a major factor is the cockpit, how you feel in the cockpit, and you have the most room on the Telaria, how the bike feels when you're when you're riding, and I think the Telaria stock form has the best throttle curve out of the three. Um, so I, I lean more towards the Telaria, even though I love the E-Ride, I think it's a fantastic bike. I, I just wish the Telaria had a little bit more power, it had the same power as the E-Ride, then it would be Telaria all the way. So as far as the power goes, of course, it's the E-Ride Pro, then it's the Telaria, and then it's the Suron. Uh, this Theron is, is, is currently mostly stock. There's no power upgrades to it. So we're going to be upgrading the controller and the battery really soon on this and uh, going to do a full mod job on it. Where this we're going to pretty much keep stock and then on, on this bike we're going to change the controller and we're going to throw the TC Torp TC1000 on it and we're going to see how that does with the stock battery. So you're going to be able to pull 11.5 continuous kilowatts with the stock battery by just changing the controller out to a Torp TC-1000.
costs a thousand dollars and it's uh, get you 11.5 kilowatts continuous which will be faster apparently than the e-ride because the Talaria boys did a head-to-head -head video when they did it and it, it beat their e-ride so so there you go guys um, hope this was helpful to you if you have any questions leave them below like and subscribe and uh, don't forget man whatever you get you're not going to be sorry because it's going to it's going to do the most important thing for you it's going to get you out to ride so don't forget guys get out and ride and have fun